This is the entry point for the auto train in Lorton, Virginia. This is the 20th, the 20th of December, 2021. Usually this gate opens at 11.30, however, the incoming train must have been substantially late because they were still offloading vehicles at 1 p.m. and this gate was still closed until perhaps 15 minutes after that. So the line of cars stretched out onto the adjacent roadway with a lot of upset, angry people wondering why they have to sit in their cars. But uh, things are moving now. Cars are being loaded onto the train cars. This is an outdoor area with a play yard over here and assorted seats and benches. So you don't have to wait inside the building because it's still a pandemic going on. Yet there are plenty of people inside the building here in their waiting area, which is pretty large in size. After going through the gate here in single line, it then expands to six different lanes of cars in front of the building entryway. And uh, the cars are then driven off the opposite side into the vehicles that transport the cars to Florida. I saw one person with short pants. Now this guy has a sort of a long sleeve shirt without a coat, but almost everybody else, else is bundled up because it's above freezing, but it's, it's a chilly day. And so we can be out here for a, a couple hours before the, they let us on the train. So uh, on the Virginia side, it's, it can be a, a cold experience and it's not even that terribly cold for what it could be in December. This is a roomette on the Amtrak auto train. Now it's a little bit difficult to get a perspective here. Uh, this is a computer sitting on a fold-down table. Uh, tucks into a pouch up against the wall and then just steps away, <laughs> if you can even step, is the uh, door. This is, um, I guess, the closest of a, of a closet is, that there is. Uh, I would say less than six inches wide by about the depth of a seat, where you can stuff a few things there. So if you're coming on the auto train and getting a roomette, do not bring your luggage with you because there's no place to put it. There's a little bit of space under the seats. Now this seat slides together to make a flat place 
with the seat I'm sitting on, which makes a flat portion, the bottom bed. This is a top bunk, which the attendant will fold down at our requested overnight time. This is the first step to get up to the bunk. This is the second step to get up to the bunk. And then I think you have to hoist yourself up the rest of the way. Uh, I think the bunk will end up at maybe this. It might just rest against this uh, support. So at this point, um, you could probably sit upright on the bottom bunk. The top bunk I found is is uh, is too shallow for a normal person to sit upright. So um, you have to sort of spend all your time on the top bunk horizontally. Uh, for the ceiling vent, there is actually an adjustment lever on it to either minimize or maximize the airflow. And I would say maximize because that's how you're going to get fresh air and remove any. Uh, contaminants from the air. Uh, there's no operable window, although it can be an emergency exit. There's no plumbing in the roomette. There's a bathroom down the hall, four bathrooms on the floor below, and one shower on the floor below. So trying to view the roomette from the outside Not very wide. Uh, on our previous video I shot, it was of the room, which is twice the dimension of this, so that you can sit either at the table here for one person, and then the other person can actually stretch out on stretch out on the um, the bunk because the bunk beds are horizontal to the distance of travel, whereas these bunks are along the distance of travel. Then when you get into the hallway here, it basically goes down the middle and you have roomettes on either side of the hallway. Okay, so this is the hallway with roomettes on either side. And then there's this little uh, corner. There's the stairs going down go around here and now the rooms are on the left side so this is uh, basically the same width of the corridor but they're only one set of rooms so they're, they're twice the dimension of the um, of the original uh, roomette configuration So, one bathroom upstairs. And then there's just a couple of roomettes here. One, maybe four plus one on the end, which is probably a different configuration. And then two restrooms that side, dressing room shower, and another restroom here. And so that's the setup of one of these covers. So this is the bathroom of the room for the uh, used by the people in the roomettes. This is about the size of a typical uh, airline bathroom. Just barely enough to get around. This is actually larger than the bathroom in the in the room or the cabin however uh, which is twice the size of a roomette but it also has a bathroom fit into it. This is actually larger than that. However, the, uh, the bathroom for the full-size room also can double as a shower.
if you can believe that. So I should note that the sink in the full-size room is actually outside of the bathroom. So this whole left side here is much narrower in the bath, the toilet part of it, because you step out of the door and then the sink is around the corner. So um, it's a different configuration. But it is physically smaller than this room, a lot less elbow room. So this is the physical plan for how the rooms, roomettes, and bathroom setups are on the um, train. In the roomette room, what sort of doubles as a closet is this hook, curved hook on the wall. Uh, these are towels right above it, or washcloth and a hand towel. Um, if you had a hanger, it could actually hang on here, but if you don't, uh, this is uh, about the only equivalent of a coat hook. And then this, uh, I've got a puff jacket here that's being held in this, but if you had um, things hanging here, then this strap would then hold it against the wall. That's uh, as much of a closet as we have in this little roomette. This is the top bunk. And the bottom bunk in the setup situation, which there is the supporting part, actually. Neither of those lumps it sits down under the frame there. So, chair height on the bottom and less than chair height on the top. And then this webbing uh, you put together so you don't fall out of the bed. <laughs> now this is at um, the direction of travel. These beds are at the direction of travel whereas the larger cabin rooms are 90 degrees away from the direction of travel. So if you want to travel feet first or head first depending how you want to travel in the roomette. Instead of cold weather on the Virginia side, here we have rainy weather as we arrive in Sanford. The uh, one and a half hour delay, one hour departure delay yesterday has turned into a four hour delay, uh, 1 p.m. in Sanford. Eventually, these ramps will have um, the automobile carrying cars uh, pulling up to them for offloading of the automobiles. And here the first of the uh, car transport trains is uh, ready for offloading here the workers are going in to uh, start driving the cars out now there's reportedly 300 automobiles that were transported with the auto train up to 30 uh, cars can be uh, purchased for uh, First offloading priority, uh, I believe the rate is $60 per car for the first offloading, and that's what we'll be seeing shortly. And that's how the process goes, car after car after car. Uh, more of these will be filled up with uh, more train cars. More automobile transport cars will be lined up here before we get stronger.